At the core of Tales from the Tavern is storytelling. Uh, tales from the Tavern, the way that we share our experiences and our insights with each other. From day one we said it's sharing our journey of discovery through song and story. And that's artists sharing their journey of discovery, us, the community, the community that forms coming together here on these Wednesday nights. And we've had great players. We've had great singers, we've had great writers, and as we've always said, we are as proud of the audience that we present to these artists as we are of the artists that we present to this audience. So thank you very much for doing your part. We are artist advocates and uh, we stand next to you really and say thank you. We, are, we feel very privileged. And so thank you very much for sharing in that journey of discovery. Yes. just relied on the essence of the, the tune when it's baked down to even if it's just vocals you know um, that's how we make it essence we, is the key word there I think that's the because I mean as you we as we started like Johnny saying we started, with, we started right. with the full <laughs> band and it sounded good and it sounded you know like it was like people were jamming you know and, and so were we and, and we loved it but there was something missing, I think, at the end of the show. We were like, wow, okay. And I mean, I knew what it was. 
it was the essence. It was right. like you don't get who we are necessarily. Right. You, the the band I mean. subtracts from, I mean, it sounds really good and people enjoy it while it's happening, but what are they walking away with? Right. Um, they're walking away with, wow, we had a nice time, but what they what we want them to walk away with is the essence yeah. and that lasts a lot longer than wow that was really totally groovy and sounded really great
there is a whole other kind of music scene in America now that's that's not the top of the mountain. It's the whole under, and it's you know that we don't see under the radar is used too much. But I mean, there's a lot of people going out and hearing music in different like Tales from the Tavern or House Concert, and they they just they just have shunned the other American Idol world of music. So it's right. You know, I mean, that's the the scene I like to exist in. Where music's going back to the communities. And, I mean, we we play incredible shows and just the strangest little you know there's an arboretum in Bell Plain, Kansas we play every year just a small little town and people come out like I say there's a whole other uh, I was, Butch Hancock said it to me he goes Jimmy you know we sell dozens of records to discriminating listeners in small pockets of good taste yeah and that's kind of what it you know yeah but dozens of records uh, add up Creating art of any kind of art, you know, like if you're creating, like we were saying, you know, paintings or 
or sculptures or poems or anything like that, you you don't have to tell. Uh, sometimes you might tell the truth, like you know this happened and then this happened and this happened. It might happen to be true, but it doesn't matter if it's true, as long as it tells the truth on a given level. That it that right. it tells some through line of truth. That's that's there's a big bell curve of human perception, and the middle part of that bell curve, the, the big fat middle. All, everybody's going to be able to find that one thing that you're telling that's true. They're going to find it resonant. You're hoping that you do, and you succeed. Any art, kind of art succeeds if it tells the right. truth. Uh, my first album came out in 1998, and uh, I wrote the whole first album about this girl I was in love with that she left me because I cheated on her. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm telling the truth. It's not good what I did, but it's the truth. And uh, I wrote the whole album of great songs, trying to get her back. And, when, and uh, the song I'm fixing to sing, I sang it to her, thinking it would melt her heart and, and, and make her want to be in my arms again. But all it really did was it empowered her. And it just made her have even that much authority over my life. So after this, that first album, I, I never wrote songs about uh, groveling and whining, because them things don't work. But this is a song I sang to her that day when I learned the awful truth about the uselessness of these kind of songs. There's a black crow by my window With a teardrop in her eye When the wind blows, weeping willow Seem to hang their heads and cry I used to hold you Just a pillow where you used to lay One day I'll be free And all these memories won't burn me like a ball and a chain I won't dream of you No, I won't love you Oh
That right there is a dung beetle that has real, he's got tears coming out of his eyes because even though he's a dung beetle, he's realized that there's got to be more. Yeah. And so he says, I'm getting out of here. I'm tired of eating elephant shit. What's, what do you got 15 minutes? 15 minutes represents today's music. <laughs> everybody, everybody comes out, they win American Idol and uh, they run them through the machine. They get some professional songwriters to write them songs, <laughs> and then they put them with a stylist, and they put them on TV, and they sell a few mu mu a few records, and they fool the dung beetles into buying more defecation on CD. Yeah. And but it only lasts for 15 minutes because the only thing that's ever gonna last is the honeycomb, which is sweet but it's hard to get. Yeah. You gotta travel around in a van and follow your dream to taste the honeycomb, my friend. Right on. But right now, I'd like to come around the corner and play a bonafide, stonified blues for you. Do we have any blues lovers here tonight? All right. This one is written by the late, great Percy Mayfield, who as some of you might know was Ray Charles's cousin and wrote a lot of Ray's early hits. He wrote Hit the Road Jack, The Danger Zone, a lot of cool songs. But this one has always been my favorite of his. At, um, and he wrote it in the early 50s during the last Cold War. Too bad we still have to be singing about this shit today. But um, anyway, what I love about the song is that he managed to wrap up into one little song, a very fervent and heartfelt prayer for world peace. And yeah, let's hear it for world peace. Let's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. And personal love fulfillment. And I can't think about two things I'd rather be praying about. I don't know about you people around. So I'm going to send this out tonight to anybody, man or woman, young or old, of any kind of persuasion, that just might have this on their heart and mind this evening. Because it's called, please. Oh. Oh, 
Cause I know when you know people Peace on earth ain't just gonna happen Till everybody's hate and greed are gone But if it's not asking too much Please Send me someone to
all are looking up here thinking, what is she going on about up there? Is she all right? Well, people, oh, y'all looking at a woman that's got the blues real bad tonight. And sometimes when you get the blues this bad, there ain't nothing left to do but just kind of steal off by yourself. Yes. Go on up in your room. Well. Get down on your knees uh, and just start to pray about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you prayed and prayed all you can pray, maybe you just you know, you run out of words, or maybe you just not sure that the message got all the way on through. Uh, uh, well, then sometimes, sometimes there ain't nothing left to do but just get real quiet in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, hmm. Just kind of, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, sometimes, sometimes there ain't nothing left to do well. but just kind of moan about it sometimes. It gets like that sometimes. Oh, Lord. get infused with joy once I'm up there the, one of the guys plays something really hip or just we get into a little groove together I just it just lifts me and and then I'll, and we pray every night before we go on we pray that we all play as one as one spirit and one soul and that we go out there and uplift people I think people, I, I, you know, I've always had good bands and I always try to sing my best and I have good songs so I usually have gotten, you know, nice comments at the end of my show. Oh, I love your voice, or I love such and such a song, we love your band. Now, in the last two years, people come up to me and say, I'm uplifted. Thank you. Yeah. I needed that. You know, it's much more than just entertainment. We, right. We're consciously trying to uplift people because there's some heavy clouds overhead, you know? Well, here's one, this is a, a very New Orleans flavored song. <clears throat> the, um, the chorus to this song comes from the street song of the fruit and vegetable man that used to come down the street that I grew up on. And he would sing at the top of his lungs about what he had on the truck. He wouldn't be on the truck, he'd be on foot out in front. His son would drive the truck and he never got it out of first gear, he'd just sort of crawl down the street, and the old man would be out in front, sliding and gliding down the street, singing at the top of his lungs. You want to hear it? He do, he, I, I, I do. I used to do this all the time. I'm going to see if I can get it out. But you'd hear him way down the street, down by Urban Park, when he'd come on my street. And uh, he'd go, Ah, God! I got be I got red beans, black beans, all kind of beans. Sweet corn, sweet corn, Merleton. That's a kind of squash. I got Merleton. I got okra. I got okra. I got banana. 
ice cold watermelon. You know I don't know much when I knew less. And I was heartbroken for the first time. I was drowning in my tears and I went looking for a lifeline. I was just trying to find some comfort, a simple tender touch. I was searching for some little cure that would not cost too much. And I could hear that produce wagon on the street. I could hear that farmer singing as I cried myself to sleep. I got by now, now, watermelon, peaches by the pound. Sweet corn, Merlin more better than in town. I got okra, enough to choke your beans of every kind. And if hungry is what's eating you, I'll sell you peace of mind. But this ain't what you came to hear me say. I hate to disappoint you. I got no love today I got no love today I got no love today No love today I could not love to save myself from lonesome desperation Everything I thought was love was worthless imitation And my concept of commitment was to take all you could give I thought the cheapest thrills I loved were teaching me to live But nothing seemed to last or see me through Nothing but that little song that I still sing for you I got my nine Sweet corn, Merle Tom, more better than in town. I got okra, yeah, enough to choke your beans of every kind. If hungry is what's eating you, I can sell you peace of mind. But this ain't what you came to hear me say. I hate to disappoint you, but I got no love to this. I got no No love today, no love today. Got no love today, none tomorrow, not now, not forever. You can't see what comes for free, I think you much too clever. For your own good, I'll tell you what's right before your eyes. Intelligence is no defense against what this implies Cause in the end no one will sell you what you need You can't buy them off the shelf You got to grow it from the seed Cause I got banana, watermelon, peaches by the pound Sweet corn, myrtle town, more better than in town And I got okra Enough to choke your beans of every kind And if hungry is what's eating you I could sell you peace of mind But this ain't what you came to hear me say I hate to disappoint you But I'm gonna disappoint you I got no love today I got no I got no love today No love today Fresh out I've gotten to the point where you know from for myself I realize there aren't any answers you know, there aren't any cosmic answers. There are only cosmic questions. 
And the cosmic questions are important because you should be focused on your existence, on the now, and not so much on the why, you know, just I am, I am, and mm -hmm. can I keep that in mind? And that's really all I, all I try to do, you know, I, there's so many ways of, of looking at existence that make people unhappy. It's almost as though they're designed to make people unhappy, as opposed to actually answering the questions. And I think of the songs, you know, a lot of people have talked about my songs as being philosophical and thoughtful and deep and this, that, and the other, you know, and all I'm really trying to do is be hopeful, you know. I think they're all hopeful, yeah. hopeful songs, yeah. you know, that you can, you can find something that will, you can find something to believe in that will make your life meaningful. I think y'all can relate to this. I mean, wherever you grow up, it's, if you've had a good childhood, that place is always really special to you. So let me take you to that place, wherever it is, while I take you on my childhood memories on this song here called Bandera Highway. <laughs> ago to reminisce with my old friends I heard some real good country music fell in love with the rodeo man his eyes were bluer than a misty morning I go going back
this old town Oh, but here I go to pack my bags again And follow the lone star in the sky And I don't think I could ever leave San Antonio Without a teardrop in my That's not the kind of success I've had. I've had the other kind of success where, you know, I've been able to, you know, pay my bills and eat and, you know, live and travel around Europe and everything for my whole life, you know, and I have great friends all over the place. That, to me, that's success. Yeah, absolutely. You don't count your success by how many houses you own or anything. You know, it'd be nice and it'd be cool if Quentin Tarantino would put a song in the movie or something where I'd make a lot of money or, you know, Bonnie Raitt would cut one of my songs or Shania Twain or somebody. That would be cool. It'd be like winning the lottery. But that's not going to make me a happier person right. or make me feel more successful. It'll just mean that I have more money. <laughs> Here's one I made up on the airplane a while back, a few, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I was on the plane and I thought, I'm going to write a song and then when I get off, I'm not going to have a melody to it, but I'm going to play a show that night and just put this song to the first melody that comes to my head. And here it is. It goes like this. I want all my friends to be happy. I want all my friends to find love. I want all my friends to share good things Be blessed by the light from above I want all my friends to be hopeful Not to be slaves to a bank Hope that my friends never have to Roll through the streets in a tank I want all my friends to have kitchens Stocked up with bountiful food I hope they wake with a smile And say words like Totes, us and do I want all my friends to know laughter Uncontrollable from deep in the gut I want all my friends to have fine shoes And to pat someone cute on the butt I want all my friends to go travel and to see the world for just what it is A beautiful
beautiful place to inhabit a big melting pot made of jizz my mom wants me to change that line <laughs> Stephen I really like that new song but I think you should change that one line to this a big melting pot made of bliss I was like, damn, Mom, that's a good line. I want all my friends to dance naked. But then my mom said, you know, there is a difference between naked and naked. Naked is when you're naked, and naked is when you're naked and up to no good. I want all my friends to dance naked. So all of their neighbors can see. I want them all to be colorblind And to keep those skinhead racists far away from me I want all my street friends to love All of the gay friends I have I'd love it if we all went to dinner Cause my gay friends always pick up the tab Want all my friends to be healthy And when they see kale and greens not just to scoff I want them to live long and prosper And to tell cancer to just go fuck off Oh yeah, that's your part And to tell cancer to just go I think we do it a little better Because if we do it really good We might scare it away for anybody Who might know somebody with cancer Or somebody who could be in the street Let's try it again And to tell cancer to just go I want all my friends to know one thing The one day when I'm long dead and gone I want them to know that I love them That that's why I wrote them this song Because I want all my friends to be happy I want all my friends to find love I want all my friends to share good things And be blessed by the light from above ba da 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 ba ba da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba ba da ba ba do the deep ba 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 da 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 ba ba da da ba 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 da da ba 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 ba
Fun doing. I want all my friends to be happy, and yes. just uh, it was just a good time tonight. I, I like the vibe of the room, yeah. and I like saying that because it's got this line in it that talks about one day when I'm all long dead and gone. It's fun to make people laugh and then give them an uppercut of yeah, like something that's ow. Right. Well, because if you're already laughing, if you have somebody laughing, the human emotion releases chemicals in the body where you're laughing. It's really good to laugh, and then. Well, they're like that, they're lubed up. You can hit them with something so hard that makes them go, ah. Well, uh, I met uh, my buddy who later got into Eagles, Glenn Fry, and then uh, I was a candle maker at the time at my own little candle shop in the garage. Tutti Frutti, Frangie Pangy. We had all these essences of smells that we used, and I had this giant candle making machine. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Glenn went off and got in the Eagles, and he went through that for a while, and then they, they broke up, and he called me and said, let's, let's write a song. And I'd never written a song with him up till then, although they had done a few of my songs, but I like to check a guy out for five or 10 years, just make sure he's gonna be compatible. <laughs> so I went over his place, and he was renting a house up in the hills, and uh, used, to be, used to be rented by James Cagney. So I just walked in and it was, had a giant ceiling, one big room with a huge fireplace. And I went, I bet they had some interesting parties in this place, you know, the vibe of Cagney and the whole Hollywood thing. And, and uh, it was in the afternoon, but there were 100 candles burning. And there was some really great bottles of red wine. And, and I said, oh, so Glenn, do you, you have a date later after we write the song, right? And he goes, no, man, it's the muse. The, the artist muse is, you know, up there somewhere. And you know, we're not the only guys trying to write a song right now. There's a lot of guys trying to write a song and we have to make this place really great so she'll think we're cool and she'll come down and drop in and give us a song. So, I'm just saying that because I know some of you are songwriters and maybe you didn't know about that. So maybe you've been like totally wasting your time. Did you ever think of that? Yeah. You thought it was all about you. No. There's always somebody else part of the action. So we, we did write this song. Thanks to her. Someone you can talk to Who will understand what you're going through When it comes to love There's no easy answer Only you can say what you're gonna do I heard you on the phone You took his number Said you weren't alone, but you call him soon. Isn't that the guy, guy who left you crying? Isn't he the one that made you blue? Then you remember those nights in his arms. You know 
you've got to make up your mind Are you gonna stay with the one who loves you? Are you going back to the one you love? Someone's gonna cry when they know they've lost you Someone's gonna thank the stars above What you gonna say when he comes over? There's no easy way to see this through. All the broken dreams, all the disappointment. Oh, girl, what you gonna do? Your heart keeps saying. It's just not fair Still you've got to make up your mind Are you gonna stay With the one who loves you? Are you going back To the one you love? Someone's gonna cry When they know they've lost you Someone's gonna thank the stars above And then this other thing, like Mozart said, uh, neither imagination uh, or whatever else he said is, is the soul of genius. He goes, love is the soul of genius. And I think that what he meant was, uh, you know, you love it and you love it more and more and you're so consumed by your love of what it is you're doing that that's what causes you to be a genius. Like Mozart was consumed by it when he was five year, nine years old or five when he wrote Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star or whatever. And it's the amount of love that determines how good you are. So I would just look at other guys. You're always sort of competing as you go up, you know, and then you see somebody like Bob Dylan, you go, well, I can't compete with that guy. He's on a complete other level. Like he's not even human. He's so good. But the thing is, ultimately, he just loved it more. He's just loved it so much more than me that he got so much better at it that he's him. And I think that's how it works. Is that your works. explanation of it? I do think that's how it works, oh. I think.
y'all so much.